Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be exploring the Red List range of apps. My name is Rebecca Bright and I'm a speech and language therapist and very pleased to be uh, talking to you today about the Kids Sound Lab apps and the Frog Game apps. Today's webinar is in listen only mode and if you have any questions, please type them in the questions box and I will either answer them at the end or my colleague will answer them as we go along. This webinar is being recorded, so you will be, will be able to access it afterwards and we will upload it onto YouTube and send you the link. So let's get started. What we're going to do today is talk about two very exciting ranges of apps. These are evidence-based, very well-designed, and uh, effective apps designed especially with young children in mind, but it can, can be used with a wide range of ages and abilities. We're going to start by exploring Kids Sound Lab. First, I want to give you a, uh, an outline of what's involved with the app. There are 24 consonants that the student or client can work on. The vowels are then presented separately. And one of the things that I think really is important in this app is that the sounds are presented in the order of acquisition for most children. So it really helps guide uh, therapists as well as parents with the way to progress from sound to sound. And therefore, parents can control the difficulty level and begin at the sound that's right for their child. So this is a, a very much a multimodal app and there is audio presented for each sound and word um, as well as the, the pictorial and the visual content. All of the sounds are practiced in association with um, in consonant vowel combinations uh, so that the child is encouraged to achieve the correct pronunciation. They're, where possible, sounds are in the initial position of words, uh, except for those that are only available in medial or final position, such as ng or n at the end of a word. What more, there are a large number of words available in the app uh, targeting the R sound. So as most therapists would appreciate, this is really something that um, a lot of therapists would find that clients on their caseload were looking to practice words in relation to. So that's um, one of the real benefits of this app, that it's been designed with that in mind. Not only are the words available uh, as single words, and in syllables, but they're also used in sentences. So it really allows for students to work on, um, on the word in, in all uh, manners, but also to progress over time. And importantly, there are lots of really fun interactive games that follow the word exercises, which act as reinforcement and to motivate the child with their therapy tasks. The aim is to uh, practice and listen to the words and sentences. Uh, so that's the, the, you know, the core of the app. Some of the other features which are great in terms of, uh, from a clinician point of view, is that you can register your students and have your whole caseload on there. Um, you can also track their progress one by one. Share and print out reports. Uh, and, you know, you can go back and monitor progress over time. And more and more, that's becoming something that's essential, not only for um, monitoring the progress of one child, but of monitoring the progress of your entire caseload, and importantly for schools, uh, service commissioners, and, and so on, monitoring effectiveness of services. So from, uh, from my point of view, that's one of the key features of this app. And the app is beautifully illustrated um, by an Icelandic artist uh, and, this, and, and a beautiful soundtrack that goes along with the apps. Together that really enriches the apps and, and makes them quite an engaging um, activity and therapy tool 
to use in the clinic but also at home. So if you haven't uh, got the apps already, you can download them from iTunes. Um, and here's a little screenshot which just shows you uh, what to do. So you just search for the name of the app, Kids Sound Lab in iTunes, and you can download the apps. Um, and you can also download those as a bundle, which is really a, a great way to save money and to access all of the apps in the range. So let's have a little look in detail uh, at the app. So I'm going to sh show you some of the screens that come from the app uh, and explain the features in a little more detail. So once you um, arrive with in, kids, in Kids Sound Lab, you're presented with um, a series of sounds and you can choose which sound that you want to work on. You're also able to access from this page the, um, the client or the student list, the settings, and you can do your backup. So there are lots of things you can do from this point as well. Some of the aspects of the app, you know, for example, the, the shopping cart uh, are behind what we call a parental gate. And you might have noticed this in other apps, but this is a way to restrict access to um, payment areas, etc., that you don't want children to, to access. So usually there's um, something to make it more difficult. So in this case, um, the parental gate is a, a multiplication that you would assume a young child would be unable to do. So that just makes it a little safer in terms of using the app and a, a very important feature. So if I'm going to start off and, and use the app with a new student, I enroll him or register him in the, in the app uh, by enter him, entering his details, uh, name and uh, date as well. So there you can see um, once he's registered, this is where I'll be able to go back and review each of the activities undertaken and his uh, success uh, in terms of the percentage um, accurate as well as having a really good overview with an average score as well. So after we've registered or set up um, a client or a student on in the app we can come back and choose the sound that we want to work on. So let's uh, for this case we might want to start with the d sound and one of the really nice features is that you don't just go straight into words, but you start listening to the sound in isolation. And where possible, it's, it's linked with an uh, environmental uh, sound that you would associate. So you can imagine a woodpecker tapping away duh, 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 to provide that um, input for the, for the child. So that auditory stimulus is happening as well. Um, at a non-linguistic level, which is, um, I think, really quite novel for this app compared to lots of apps that are out there. So the student can, can listen to that. They can record their own attempt. And you'll see at the bottom of each page, the, the format is very similar. So there's a microphone, for example, where I can record uh, my child's attempt and listen to that back as well. And then once I'm ready, I just press on the forward arrow in the bottom right corner to progress to the next um, the next step. Um, and you can see actually the, the screen I just had on before was when uh, there was guest access, so where I didn't have a particular child registered, and this one now is uh, registered for a particular child. The next example uh, you can see so is, is um, for train, and you can imagine the ch, -ch, -ch sound that uh, goes along with that. So a really lovely introduction to each of the sounds. And as I said, a really important non-linguistic introduction to the sound, um, which I think is a lovely way to, to support um, later phonological awareness. You've got the buzzing bees and so on. So some nice examples. And you can see that already that the the, the illustration and, and the um, Carry it disinvolve are really quite motivating for, for students. 
And there we go, another example. So once you've moved through um, looking at the sound in isolation in a non-linguistic manner, uh, we move to syllables. And the idea here is to pop or to burst each of the balloons and um, hear and then potentially record and hear back production of um, consonant vowel syllables using the target uh, phoneme. So you can work your way through, through that as well. Following that, the next step is to move on to the words, um, the sounds at word level. And you have a really lovely range of, um, of stimulus for, for each of the sounds. Uh, some really quite engaging uh, images again. And uh, again, you can record and listen back to your attempts there. There's another example. And I think one of the really nice opportunities here is that some of the words may be less familiar to students and that need not be a barrier, but perhaps an opportunity to focus on building vocabulary, um, talking about the meaning of the word uh, and really consolidating the um, comprehension of that term or of that concept uh, and therefore having an opportunity to practice the sound while you're discussing it as well. So once you've um, worked through listening uh, and repeating and recording and hearing back the words, um, you then move into the next stage, which is where you have two boxes uh, displaying the target sound and, and an additional sound, uh, and you tap on those to open them. And then the idea is to tap on each of the pictures and move them into the appropriate box. So you could tap on... Uh, after you've opened the put and the dut box, tapping on the dog, hearing dog, and then moving that into the appropriate box. So the child's getting really great feedback as to their auditory um, processing and auditory discrimination of those words. The next uh, activity that comes along in the sequence is that you're presented with a balloon and uh, um, a choice of three um, pictures and the, the behind the balloon or once you tap the balloon you'll hear a word for one of those pictures and you need to select the image of the sound or the word that you just heard. So it might be boat and then you tap on boat and so on. And then you're finally you have a, a fun game where you're a, a memory matching style game where you're turning around some of the words and the pictures that you've just seen in the tasks uh, and agree, again, a really nice opportunity to then practice that stimulus. So a great carryover activity or a great way to um, reinforce what you've just been working on. And all the while, you can see that green bar down the bottom remains. So you're able to work on those key skills uh, of recording and listening back. So that's perfect for self-evaluation. Uh, and while self-evaluation is really important, the child also receives lovely feedback from the app. So in this case, you get a lovely bright yellow star pop up on the screen um, to let you know you've passed the level. So as you can see, it's a very um, logical and stepwise uh, progression through a hierarchy of tasks, all focusing on building the child's uh, phonological awareness and ability to discriminate those words and to practice them using the record feature. So it's a quite a comprehensive um, task and the child needs to move through those step by step and at the end they're met with a great reinforcement of those games and then the bright yellow star. What you might have noticed was that in each of the screens there's a a happy looking son in the top corner and he's there to guide you through the app so at any stage if the therapist the child or the parents not sure of what to do they simply tap on this the son and he'll um, give you the instructions for that particular game so that consistency throughout the app really makes it easier for therapists for parents but also and most importantly for the students using the app 
So once you've um, finished the game, up pops your report and you can see results expressed as a percentage. And then if you want to, you can uh, deep dive into the results and get more details as well as to, as to their success with specific components of the task. And as, you, as I mentioned before, you also get that average percentage. Uh, then you can click on the envelope to share the re results. So a therapist could share with parents or parents might share the work they've been doing at home with their clinician or with their teacher. Okay, and then here you go. So the report comes out like this. You, you, uh, and you, I'd be very impressed, but I'm sure some of the people attending are also speaking Icelandic, so they can read the report in Icelandic. Of course, if you've got the English version of the app, you'll see this in English. And as I mentioned, you can also print this out. So um, that will print out using air, the air print um, manner of printing. Right, so some of the settings that you can use uh, allow you to customise the app for each student. And this is really important. And I think one of the benefits um, of having such a comprehensive app is that you can make lots of changes or, and that some of them might feel subtle, but they can really make a difference between um, whether you achieve success or not. So you might want to um, prohibit the student from recording their own attempts. You might want them to really, really, really focus on just the auditory discrimination and the auditory processing uh, skills. You can also adjust the percentage at which somebody is deemed to have passed. And we all know as therapists, um, this is really important to find the right level that's going to motivate and challenge your student while not being unrealistic. So um, you can adjust the passing rate. And I think that's something that lots of apps could really take into account to make them um, even more motivating. You've got a couple of uh, options now, one for uh, turning on or off the background music. For some students, it will work as a great motivator and help with their engagement. And for others, it might be distracting. So you can turn that on or off. And you have an in-app uh, setting to adjust the volume as well. And finally, the other button that comes off the main page of the app is the information about the app. So you've got uh, a clear indication of the rationale behind the app um, and the background information that you need to understand the, the process by which this app was developed as well. Uh, from that point, too, you can also uh, contact support. So a really important page for people using the apps and probably if you're directing the app towards parents so that they have that important information to access as well. The other button off the home page uh, that you can see in the bottom right hand corner that looks like a life ring or a donut is neither of those. It's to help you with backup and restoring. So uh, using Dropbox, which I'm sure many of you have already on your computers, um, the and, and iPads, you can back up uh, and restore uh, the user's uh, results and data, and that will save. And you can save that uh, on in on in your Dropbox itself, or drag it out onto your desktop or your device, um, so that you have always have access to that. And that's really important for therapists to be able to save that uh, for as long as they want. So they may want to attach it to a uh, a student's file, for example, or, um, or archive it if they're no longer seeing that particular student. And of course, you have to allow access to do that. And then if you want to bring the data back to the app, you simply tap on restore and, and select the backup that you want to bring back to the app. So who is this app for? Well, while it's been 
especially designed for younger children. It really is suitable for a range of ages, um, up to probably about age 12. Um, in it's while it's also designed to help with students with particular difficulties with sound, so in, in you know individual sounds, you can very much use it um, as an app to help a child have an all-rounded head start in terms of phonological awareness and the important pre-reading and pre-spelling skills that uh, are really essential. It's been designed equally for boys and girls, and you can see the two characters in it, uh, Bobby and Bonnie, so it certainly tries to appeal to both boys and girls. And it's certainly used in special education classrooms, but it can be all easily adapted and used um, by teachers of foreign language and uh, in adult rehabilitation as well. So it's designed to have wide appeal, but it has been particularly designed for younger children working on sound acquisition. Right, so that was a, uh, an overview of the key, uh, the Kids Sound Lab word, uh, app. And now I'm going to talk you through um, the second range of apps, which all feature this lovely green frog called Hoppy. So we're going to have a, uh, a look at the apps uh, that are involved in this range. Um, I hope um, I'm going at the right pace, but if you do have any questions, as I said, please do take the time to type them in the questions box and I can answer them, um, or I can answer them at the end as well. So let's move and have a look at the frog games. Okay, so there are three games in the um, frog games, one, two, and three, and then you have frog game school. I'm going to go through and tell you all about all of those options. We're going to start with the frog game apps, uh, frog games one through one through three. It's a bit of a tongue twister. And they all revolve around a really lovely story um, of a wizard putting a spell on Hoppy. Hoppy's the lovely frog that you saw on the previous screens. So he's, and as a result, he's lost his voice. So the children using the app are tasked with solving a series of puzzles so that they can reach the castle uh, and there at the castle he'll be able to get his voice back. So it's set as a challenge, but along the way, the children using the app are practicing the sounds uh, that gradually get more difficult from the three different apps. Uh, and are working on uh, phonological awareness, uh, sound analysis, and connecting letters and sounds. So again, they're really essential um, tasks for a literacy and reading, and the app's been designed for children uh, four or five years of age or older. So that's the Frog Games 1 through 3, and then you have... Uh, the school version of the game, and that encompasses uh, Frog Games 1 and 3. Uh, but you can also, it's been really designed for te teachers or parents who want to use it with multiple students, so it's sort of bringing everything together. Um, and it's probably you know, suits slightly older children who can work through the whole system in one go. So let's have a look. This is Frog Games School, and this is the, the main screen. And you can see you've got a um, you've got Hoppy in the top left of the screen, and he's going to work his way through um, the sounds. And again, you'll notice that they're presented in the order that you would expect for uh, typical speech sound acquisition. So you work your way through, uh, targeting one sound at a time, until you reach the castle, where Hoppy will hopefully get his voice back. And you can tap on the TV in the top right-hand corner uh, to hear the story. And um, this is really lovely for, um, for the young students using the app who will be informed of the adventure that they're about to undertake. And here you can see a really lovely example. Here's a group of children. So you, in, a, in the same way, you can share the story of Hoppy um, on the screen in the classroom. Um, 
and everybody can follow the story together. So they're great for uh, targeting phonological awareness skills, vocabulary goals uh, on the big screen in the classroom or at nursery. And in the same way, you could use it with Kids Sound Lab as well. So here's the story. To, as, you, as we said, Hoppy's um, been cursed by the wizard. And so you see the wizard peeking up on the in the bottom right of the screen. Um, and you can see he needs to get the key, the book, and the magic wand to be able to make his way to the castle. And uh, again, you've got lots of lovely games to, to play to, as you work your way through, through the app. Uh, for example, so you had the matching game that you saw or games where you need to drag the match the wand to the image that you see on in the center of the screen or the key. So lots of lovely ways to uh, really bring the child into the world of Hoppy uh, and motivate him for um, you know, working on speech sounds. So it's really is lots of fun and um, for little ease it's certainly very, very engaging. As with Key, uh, Kids Sound Lab, you have a settings uh, button which allows you to um, adjust the difficulty. Um, and you can, for example, not have written words if the child isn't at that level yet. So lots of things you can do to make the app more appropriate for younger children. So here we are in uh, Frog Game 1. And the idea here in this first task is to drag the image to the um, sound. And again, these are more environmental sounds like so mm, for um, looking at the delicious ice cream and so on. So I drag the, the corresponding cards together. And once the child's got all four, uh, you know, they've passed that task and they can move on to the next one. And here, again, you've got the environmental cues of each sound. So, for example, the owl says woo woo, so you've got the W sound, and they can move wood and wade into um, the, the owl, and then on for the boy with the ice cream, mm, moving mop and mint there. So you can you always have auditory feedback too. So when you tap on the words, you hear them, and the same when you tap on the cards for the boy and the owl, you hear those sounds as well. Uh, in this next stage, you open up four boxes and each of the boxes has a sound attached. You hear those and then you can tap on each of the pictures above and drag those into the, um, the relevant box. And then when you achieve that, you win the key, you, you acquire the key. There we can see Hoppy's on his way on his adventure. The nasty wizard turns into a nice wizard. So each of the apps is, uh, works you through the series of, uh, of tasks enabling you to target uh, sounds in its normal uh, acquisition order or expected acquisition order. Um, and this is, an, this is you know, built on um, uh, Brindis's knowledge and expertise, also her work with uh, Barbara Hodson. And one of the things I'll uh, um, signpost you to is uh, a really lovely study, and it's available on the, the website, where you can see the progress that was uh, achieved by uh, students using the apps. So they were tested uh, pre and post using um, uh, using the program, and we were able to see that that the success was evident uh, across the different domains that they were tested on. They were, so they were assessed for language, letter recognition, phonological awareness, uh, and we were able to see um, progression across those domains uh, in the different schools. So, have a look at that. 
and year on year there was an average improvement of 30 percent looking at uh, looking at schools in different regions in Iceland and looking at progress over time. And the, you, here's the, uh, the a summary of the results, but um, you can see that over 90% uh, of the at-risk stu students who had multiple articulation errors uh, had uh, success in, in, in correcting their articulation after using the Kids Sound Lab intervention program. But there is more, more details of that study available on the website and I really do uh, urge you to, to have a look at that because it's quite a compelling and comprehensive uh, rationale for, for the way that the apps have been designed um, and I think one of the very few apps and app ranges that have such um, depth of uh, evidence behind them. So I think in terms of uh, sharing that knowledge with uh, teachers and commissioners and parents, I certainly think that that's um, uh, very compelling. So that's um, the, the apps, um, apps uh, in detail. I'm now going to uh, run you through um, a quick demonstration so you can see the apps um, in action. We're going to do that for a few minutes and then I'm very happy to answer questions at the end of that. So bear with me while we quickly switch over. Okay, so here's the app live. I've got it connected up to my screen, so you're, I'm mirroring what I'm doing on the iPad. We've come back to Kids Sound Lab here, and let's start uh, with the sh sound. And I tap on that, and um, I can hear, um, as I said, the non-linguistic production of that sound. Oh, sorry, my iPad just did a... Flip. I'm just going to adjust because I can see that you you can't hear. Let me just check one of my settings to make sure you should be able to hear it. Oh, my volume's down. That will be why. Hopefully you'll be able to uh, hear that as well. So we can hear the sh sound. And as I said, you're able to um, record the audio or not. And as you saw, that's a setting to go off. So once we're happy with that level, the student can move to the next stage um, where they're seeing each of the syllables one by one. Uh, and they, as we tap on each of them, each of the syllables is presented and I, you, they can hear, uh, hear that presented. I'm just going to try to adjust my sound for a moment. Bear with me. Okay, so as I skip to the next page, uh, next step in the app, we start to move to word level and each of the words is presented and we have the opportunity to uh, record those by tapping on the record button at the bottom of the screen, which you'll see now, and then I can hear them back by pressing on the play button to the left of that. Likewise is the next one, shark and so on. So I move through quite a comprehensive vocabulary, providing lots of stimulus for working on the target sounds. Right, and so once I achieve that, we're then reinforcing that by matching the sounds to the sounds on the box. So I can tap on those and move the uh, sounds into the box that they belong to. And I can tap on uh, this one here and it will play the sound. I know you might have trouble hearing the audio I think it's because I'm uh, running the microphone through my computer But if I tap on the uh, question mark on the balloon It will play one of the words and then I have to tap on the word that I think matches and when I'm correct Which will be this 
third one, we shadow, the balloon pops and we move on to the next one. Here's the memory game that you saw earlier. So a great way of reinforcing um, the content that you've just worked on. So the child flips over the two, oh, that was lucky, and finds two that matches. So you have a great opportunity then to talk about shed, I found two sheds, and so on. So a really rich opportunity for um, eliciting the speech sounds that you're targeting and so on. So I can move through and you'll see all of the content from the um, images that you used earlier. So you've got that as a really lovely reinforcement game. And then as you saw, the star pops up and you know that you've finished that level. And here's the sun back to tell you what to do next. So really simple and effective but a very structured approach behind the scenes. So while the child will just think they're having fun and playing the game, they don't know that behind it this is a robust methodology um, designed to target um, speech acquisition in a very structured and focused manner. And what's more, um, a very structured reporting structure as well. So then I could come back and see the, the results of, of the particular student that I'd registered, uh, share those, print them, um, or back them up as you saw earlier. So that's uh, Kids Sound Lab. I'm going to skip uh, quickly across to show you um, Frog Game 1 to give you more of a feel of how the frog games uh, have been designed. And I'm just going to... Uh, Bear with me a second, I'm just going to adjust and take my microphone out and try to instead to use the sound through the iPad as I think that's the reason. Bear with me for one minute. Okay, so here you can see, in this case, I've already completed the mm sound and I'm ready to move on to mm. So Hoppy's sitting at the ready um, to start at that game. So here we are in uh, Frog Game 1. So we've got the first set of, uh, of sounds that we would hear um, and we would be able normally to hear the sound, making the horse making the mm sound, so reinforcing um uh, that in a non-linguistic way. We then move through to the task of, of, of matching um, the objects to the sound that represents them. So I can uh, drag those the sounds to, to the, the picture that matches them. And so on. So there you go. And again, you, you would move through and Hoppy jumps off the screen, ready to tell you to move to the next one. So you could do that again with this step. And then here you have the opportunity to hear the words um, in written form, see the words in written form rather, and then you can move the words that match the sound represented by the particular pictures. Again, some of the words might be more complex, but I think offer a really great uh, opportunity to discuss a more comprehensive vocabulary. Um, I think children learn really nicely from being challenged to think about what a word might mean um, and, you know, to learn things that way. As I said, you can tap on the screen at the top, the television, and hear about Hoppy's story. So that's uh, a nice opportunity to do that there. Um, and so that's how Frog Game works. And Frog Game School is very similar. But of course, you have the, re the recording and the reporting feature, sorry, the reporting feature that runs alongside that as well. Okay, so there are the apps in action. Um, and uh, this at this stage, I'll take the opportunity. So uh, take this opportunity to remind you that the apps are available on iPad and iPhone, uh, both in English and Icelandic, and they're available at the 
uh, it's currently at a discounted price, so please take advantage of that uh, and download them, uh, them right now while they're, while they're on sale. And we're going to flip back through um, to the PowerPoint, bear with me. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you ha oops, have any questions, please do um, please do answer them and uh, ask them and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and thank you all. Thank you all for your time and attention. Okay, well, if there aren't any questions, um, I'll thank you very much for joining this webinar and we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. And don't forget, you will receive a copy of the webinar so you can watch it again later or share it with your colleagues who missed out today. Thank you very much and bye.